So, in recent times, 3D generative modeling has advanced at an unprecedented pace, driven by innovations in latent 3D representation design and the integration of large-scale latent learning and generative models. Now, as much as there's a whole controversy about generative tools, technology in its sense is meant to develop and move forward. One actor that has been quiet in this field but is making super strides, especially with their new release, is the folks at Microsoft, as they just released Trellis.2. Trellis.2 is an open source image to 3D model which produces over 1536 QPBR textured assets trained on 4 billion parameters, built on native 3D VAEs with 16 times spatial compression that delivers efficient scalable high fidelity asset generation. And one of the big differences with this, outside the fact that it's open source, is this leverages of a novel field free sparse voxel structure termed OmniVoxel. An omnivoxel is designed to encode both precise geometry and complex appearance simultaneously, and this works with two different field-free stuff, which includes the F-shape, which deals with geometry, and this utilizes a flexible dual grid representation to handle arbitrary topologies while preserving sharp edges. At the same time, we also have the F-mat, which deals with appearances, and this supports full PBR attributes for objects, which includes the base color, metallic, roughness, and alpha. And with the introduction of the sparse compression 3D variational auto encoder, this can now directly blend both high quality 3D model alongside textures to enable efficient large scale generation of the models. And this, alongside the SLAT, works hand in hand to produce rich, detailed 3D models. And this looks pretty interesting. And of course, for those who like to read up on the paper, possibly like to get your hands on it, then you can simply go over to link in the description that's gonna bring you right here where you can read up on the paper. And of course, you can simply go over to the GitHub where you can read more about it. And for those that are wondering about the license, if you simply go over to the license section right here, you would notice that the license is an MIT license, which reads that permission is hereby granted free of charge to any person obtaining a copy of the software and associated documentation files, which in this case is considered as the software. And this is for them to be able to deal in the software without restriction, including without limitation, the right to use, copy, modify, merge, publish, distribute, sublicense, and or sell copies of the software, and to permit persons to whom the software is furnished to do so subject to the following conditions, which basically just says that the same copyright actually applies to literally every part of this. And down here implies that they do not offer any form of warranty. Actually, if you go all the way up here within the MIT license, you see all of the permissions. The things that you don't get here is liability, so you don't hold them responsible, and there's no warranty attached to this. Other than that, everything seems to look pretty cool, especially for those who like to use this for both personal and commercial projects. If you're thinking about running this offline, there is a couple of packages that are also necessary for you to get this going. However, if you're just thinking about exploring this right here on the internet, you can simply do that via the Hugging Face demo. So if you simply click on the Hugging Face demo, it's gonna bring you right here where you can start exploring. And from here is where you can start generating stuff. We do have all of these example images that we can use to start the generation. But before we use any of these ones, there is this Zootopia inspired raccoon that I would like to explore. And automatically, it skins it out and we can now make some decisions from here. So resolution, we're going to keep this as it is. For decimation count, we're going to leave the decimation at 300,000. This offers from 100,000 all the way to 500,000. 300,000 seems to be a very fair point. So we're going to keep it as it is. For texture, we have 1K all the way to 4K texture. But in this case, it's already set to 2K, which is more than enough. Now, if you go over to the advanced settings, we've got guidance strength, guidance scale, and you know, we've got guidance for like a lot of things which deals with material generation, the shape generation, and of course, the sparse structure generation. So if you like to generate this, you can simply click on generate, just like you have with similar models. You click on generate, and this is going to process the whole thing. And once it's done with the processing, what you will be getting is unlike every other one that just simply go through and just gives you a 3D model, this will give you a slider where you can check different views of the model, which is pretty interesting. So it renders that different views and you can simply go through, check them out, see the normals, see the ambient occlusion, see the base color, and you can see different lighting conditions. And once you're comfortable or you're happy with what you have, you can click on extract GLB. And because this uses the whole GLB open source stuff, it extracts the GLB file and you'll be able to see it in 3D. 
And once you have this in 3D, you can rotate it, confirm that you're happy with what you have, download this and bring that right into your favorite DCC tool. And this looks pretty cool. So you can see this in Blender. Let's actually increase the lighting a little bit, possibly make this about 200 so we can get a bit more light in there. And let's see that. All right. So things look pretty nice. If you have this selected and you go over to your shading, you would see that we've got all the maps plugged in. So we have our map for our base color, our roughness, and also our metalness. So we can actually go in and dial things up and down. And you would also notice that this respects all these tiny spaces. So most of the models that we've explored before, they do not respect all these, you know, tiny spaces. They kind of just merge things in. But for what it is for a cute character like this, this looks cool. Now, if we go back to Hugging Face, we can also explore more options. So we have this option of a Dwarf Viking, and I think this looks pretty cool. Let's go ahead and generate that. And with that, you can see that we have something that looks really nice. We can get a closer look and actually inspect this and see that it holds up together. I like the idea that it keeps the four and also very interesting details. Of course, all of these details can be amped up depending on the decimation size that you set. And this can be said for like a lot of things. So whether you're looking at converting sculptured images into 3D models, or you're looking at hard surfaces or stuff like this, these actually works really well. And you can see that it holds up pretty well, especially when you look at it in tools like Blender. This looks really good. And we can also explore more options as well. There is also the option where you can work with wood stuff, which is also pretty nice. Let's explore this one. That looks cool. If you're looking at working with stuff that has hair, they also hold up the head and also stylized stuff pretty well. I mean, from all of the examples that we've seen, alongside some of these other examples that are just simply rolling across the screen now, you can see that this does a very good job at recreating nice looking 3D models from a single image. Maybe not 100% what you will want, but it is more like a set of bays which you can explore with. And the fact that this is open source makes it even interesting because I believe over time there will be more people contributing to this to making it one of the nice tools or one of the nice generative tools out there. Now there is also something that I sort of struggle with and I believe a lot of you guys may end up struggling with it. For some reason, I don't know if this is something that is not yet implemented in the hogging face part of it, and it has to do with the idea of transparency. In general, when you get to create these things that has to do with either glass, water, or any transparent surface, by default, when you're going through the sliders, you see them. But when you try to download, or even when you convert this to 3D, you no longer see the fact that this is transparent. And the funny thing here is if you bring this into tools like Blender and you choose to turn on the alpha, maybe for some reason you're sort of thinking maybe the alpha is just going to turn on only one object. No, it turns on the alpha for all of them. So I think there is something that is not yet been fully implemented. Other than that, everything seems to be looking cool and I would definitely recommend that you explore it, especially if you're thinking about 3D reconstruction of certain stuff, or maybe you're looking for something that you can use to start off a base mesh or maybe you're just trying to find something that is fully open source that you can explore, then you can go ahead, see these things for yourself and start dealing with them. Links to this is going to be in the description for those who like to explore this to come through and check them out for themselves. At the same time, you might want to check out some of the videos that I've just recently made that has to do with where you can find free textures. So just in case you're looking for free textures, professional textures, we made a full video about that one. At the same time, we've also made a couple of nice cool videos as well, which might definitely interest you. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. Links to most of this will be in the description, so do well to check them out. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.